Good evening, I'm Bruce Goldstein, Film Forum's Repertory Artistic Director, and it's my great pleasure to welcome my friend James Curtis all the way from his home in Brea, not La Brea, California. Uh, Jim, of course, is a legendary biographer, and he, he's written books on Spencer Tracy, W.C. Fields, William Cameron Menzies, the great production designer. We did a festival with him around the book a few years ago, and most recently, Buster Keaton. And it is available for sale tonight at our concession if there are copies left. Anyway, welcome back, James, even if it's only virtual. And tonight you're gonna talk about the subject of your very first book. You wrote this 40 years ago? How is that even possible? Actually, I wrote it more than 40 years ago. It was published 40 years ago. Well, the book was called Between Flops, yeah. a biography of Preston Sturgis. And when did you start writing it? Uh, 1976. Whoa. And it wasn't, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't published till? Uh, 82. By and there had been one other book on him before. Yeah, there was a, there was a paperback uh, that was uh, authored by James Ursini. And uh, it was based on his master's thesis at UCLA. And uh, it was published by uh, Leonard Moulton, as a matter of fact. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. And as a weird kind of uh, circular thing, uh, it was published by Curtis Books. Oh, that's funny. Le Leonard Moulton was the uh, series editor. But you went out and did interviews with survivors. And there were many survivors in the 70s. Yeah, there absolutely were. When uh, you think about it, it was only 30 years from the events. Unfortunately, Preston Sturgis wasn't one of them. He he left us in 1959, so. Uh, but his but, widow, Sandy, was alive. Uh, his third wife, Louise, was around. And I was able to interview her, uh, Priscilla Wolfan, who was uh, one year younger than Preston and was his uh, his landlord at one time and uh who else eddie bracken joel mccrave rudy valley uh talked to a lot of people we had sandy sturgis eddie bracken sandy sturgis mm -hmm. and tom Sur sturgis their son were guests at our opening night party of this very theater because i opened the theater with a, a rep repertory my part of the theater at least our first repertory festival was called written and directed by preston sturgis a six-week blowout series, much more comprehensive than the one now, which is much more curated, I should say. But uh, we had, we had uh, Sandy was a wonderful guest, as of course was Eddie and Tom. And Tom will be joining us. Well, he joined us already for the opening night of this series. And uh, Joel McRae's grandson, Wyatt, will be doing a Zoom introduction for the Palm Beach story. So Preston Sturgis was a successful playwright on Broadway, and then he uh, became very successful in Hollywood as a as a playwright who uh, wrote scripts without co-writers, which was rare in Hollywood, wasn't it, in the 1930s? That's that's true, but he thought of himself more as a playwright, and uh, playwrights usually worked alone. and. Uh, he, in, in fact, pioneered the idea that he could write a screenplay and uh, sell it uh, to a studio after having completed it rather than working on a salary basis. Uh, the screenplay in question uh, became uh, Power and the Glory, which uh, was filmed in 1933 and released and is uh, considered to be, in terms of his flashback uh, technique, an influence on Orson Welles and Citizen Kane later on. I, I wrote Orson Welles a letter one time and asked him about the power and the glory. And uh, he wrote me back a letter, which I still have, that said, in effect, uh, if it did have any influence on me, I am unaware of it. But, yeah. uh, but it was, it was, it got quite a lot of press at the time. And fortunately, it's been restored uh, very nicely after. And we're showing that restoration, a 35 millimeter print from UCLA Film and Television Archive. Right. Gorgeous. The, re yeah. the restoration was done by Bob Gitt, and uh, Tom's hand is in one shot that they had to replicate. So uh, there's an insert of of Spencer Tracy signing something, and they yeah. used Tom Sturgis's Preston's son's hand, right? Yes, that's right. Uh, 
And here's where everything dovetails nicely, because in 1933, the first version of The Great McGinty was written by Preston Sturgis, utilizing, again, a flashback technique uh, that you'll see tonight in this particular uh, film. It's, it's told in flashback, and uh, it, it works very well that way, but it was conceived that way. And its initial title was The Vagrant. Sturgis is often said to be the first screenwriter to become a director. It's not quite true. There no, were that's others. not quite true. There were others. Uh, Hector MacArthur wrote and directed some films in the 30s, as you know. Chaplin, of course, conceived and wrote uh, his features and directed. Uh, so there, there are others. But Preston Sturgis was the first of a whole line of great writer uh, directors in the 1940s. He was the first one Billy Wilder followed, uh, John Huston followed, Mankiewicz followed. Uh, so the 40s produced uh, a good number of high quality writer directors, but Preston Sturges was the first and in some ways uh, the most admired in, in his time. How did he get the studio to agree to let him direct the script? It wasn't, it wasn't done. It just wasn't done. No, it wasn't done. Uh, he wanted to direct, he said he wanted to be a prince of the blood. He wanted uh, authority over the filming of his scripts. And he, he was like, I think his attitude was similar to Billy Wilder's who once said that he became a director to keep Mitchell Lyson from screwing up his scripts. And uh, I think Sturgis probably felt the same way. And all you have to do is compare one of Sturgis' scripts that was directed by Mitchell Lyson with the result of Sturgis having directed one of his own scripts. And you'll see a, a, a miles of difference. And uh, well, I buy that, except that some of the films that Sturgis wrote for Lyson are wonderful. Easy Living and Remember yeah, the Night. Yeah. They're you just know. not, they're just not, they're not directed in the way that we've become used to Sturgis having handled the material. Uh, and you'll see that uh, with this film uh, that we're about to see, uh, Great McGinty. Uh, it's, uh, it's a film that exudes energy and creative energy for its time. It's something where Sturge just grabbed hold of it and ran with it in a way that uh, is thrilling, I think. And uh, it, pre it, it, it tells you what's going to come in the future with Sturgis. Look at any of his later films, Palm Beach Story, Miracle of Morgan's Creek, uh, Sullivan's Travels, Unfaithful Years, and uh, you'll see the same uh, fingerprints all over those films that you see here. Uh, he burst on the scene and he was fully formed as a director, I think. Um, the film went through a number of titles, a story I should say, it was story of a man at one point, biography of a bum at another point. Uh, when they went before the cameras with it, it was called Down Went McGinty. And that's, that uh, uh, title comes from an old drinking song of the 19th century. And McGinty was a pugnacious Irishman who commits suicide by drowning himself uh, at the end. And uh, the lyric was, down went McGinty to the bottom of the sea. And uh, Sturgis picked that title. They ran with it and decided they wanted to change it. They weren't comfortable with it. One sheets were already printed that say down, said down with McGinty. There were lobby cards that said down with McGinty. And uh, they printed up snipes to go on, that they could glue onto the one sheets that said uh, the great to replace down went. So uh, uh, it was known as down with McGinty right up to the wire, but then it became the great McGinty. And uh, it was kind of a, I, I guess you, in terms of how the studio looked at these things, it was kind of a B plus, or if you want to call it an A minus, I guess that would work as, as well. Um, B pictures at that time were made for $150,000, $200,000. The McGinty budget was, I believe, around $325,000. Um, and they, they started filming in December of 1939, uh, finished in January of 1940. Uh, interesting cast, you'll see Bill Demarest, who was in a lot of the Preston Sturgis films and was kind of the unofficial head of the Sturgis Stock Company. Uh, Bill Demarest, a wonderful guy. I was able to interview, interview him for my book. Um, Muriel Angelus, uh, who plays the girl in this one, uh, was British. Uh, she was essentially a British stage and film star. Uh, 
came to Broadway at one point and then was given a contract at Paramount. They never knew quite how to use her. She's very good in this. She's a good selection. It was her last movie. She oh, really? lived a ripe old age, but The Great McGinty uh, uh, meant the end of her film career. But she's good in it. And uh, everything that you needed from her is, is, is in the film, I think. She's, she's, she responded beautifully to Sturgis's uh, writing in his direction, I think. The, he was revising the script all along as he was shooting the film. He was very green as a director. Uh, the uh, assistant director, George Templeton, told me that when he came on the set the first day, he asked for the viewfinder and then was looking through the wrong end of it. He also told me how Brian Donlevy, who's very good in this film, was assembled every morning for the camera. Uh, he wore lifts in his shoes. Uh, he put on a toupee, uh, wore a girdle. Uh, so he, 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 was, he was not Ryan Don Levy until he had finished being assembled every morning, but uh, uh, he's, he's good in the film. He is a wonderful foil and vice versa for Akim Tamarov, who plays the mysterious foreign born uh, boss, political boss in this film. Um, for the time, though, the, the film, its content, its voice was uh, different and exciting. And uh, Preston Sturges, as a result, was uh, uh, nominated for Best Original Screenplay and uh, won the Oscar for Best Original Screenplay for 1940. Is it true that he sold the script to Paramount for $1? No, a, no, he actually he sold it to Paramount for $10. He had a photostat made oh, okay. of a check and it was pasted in his scrapbook. I saw it. So that was the way. I'm sorry, I should have gotten back to the answer of that question, but um, he uh, he wanted to direct badly, and he was under contract at Paramount at a princely sum for 1939 of you know maybe two thousand twenty five hundred dollars a week for doing what he did, and uh, so his scripts were costly to the studio. And so when he went to the head of production, Will Bill LeBaron at that point, William LeBaron. Uh, he offered to sell the script to them for $1. And LeBaron says, somehow that doesn't sound legal. Let's make it $10. And so they made it $10. And that's how he got the assignment. Of course, it was a great critical hit. It was a commercial hit. And uh, he was off and running. Well, that's a great way to wrap it up. Let's see it now. Preston Sturgis's The Great McGinty, formerly Go Down McGinty. Down went McGinty. Down went McGinty. <laughs> <laughs> Starring Brian Donlevy, Akeem Tamira, Bill Demarest. Who else is in it? Muriel Angelis and the Full Sturgis Stock Company. And the Full Sturgis Stock Company. Enjoy it. And thank you, Jim. Thank you.